Anyway, <laughs> Baroni, you're welcome to our studio. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Actually, I'm loving this cat. I think I posted, I yep. commented on your picture on your socials that yeah. this is gorgeous. It's a different you. And mm. I never knew the pink would look this great on, you know, uh, like on a shortcut like yeah. this. What, what's inspiring this new look? Is don't judge me. <laughs> oh, I just love to. I wanted to do something different. Yeah, that's mm. all. And so far, mm. we're going to maintain it. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> anyway, so it's the full house here. We have Cyril, Lenny, and of course, Olile and myself. We're going to be having some fun with you because we're excited by the lyrics of uh, Don't Judge Me. Mm -hmm. It's not like you've not done songs that we've we've been amazed by. Yeah. You know, the woman's song also was a beautiful song, Together with Ifia. Yeah, it's yeah. another song that I love. But this one takes has some reality check on us. Yeah. We, those who are not the pastor's children, but they're onlookers who have a say, you know, and keep saying that, oh, for a pastor's child to behave like, this the pastor cannot come and preach to me because he's not checked his house you know the people on the street saying a lot of things and it's more like as um, uh, ricky was saying behind the scenes that it's more like you poured your heart into yeah. this one tell us about don't judge me okay so i think right from an early age i realized a lot of people judge me just because i'm a daughter of a reverend minister so it's like we will be doing something and everybody would just point me out well, you were a pastor's child, why are you doing this with your friends? And it's not like I'm even sinning or doing anything, you know. So it's like it, it went on and on. I didn't understand why I have to be different. And then my talent also came in. And as a rapper, people are like, you can't be a rapper. Like the, the person that you are, you cannot be a rapper. And it's like I have to stop. I have got people coming at me all the time. And then it's like it's growing. The more I become big, the more people think I'm swaying from God's work. I don't know whether they think because I'm a pastor's child, I have to end up as a pastor. People always say, oh, we know, we know she's going to come back. But you don't know whether I'm still with God or not. It's like you don't know my spirituality. Mm -hmm. But people just judge me. So it's a whole lot that has happened to me myself. And I, I wanted to pull my heart out with the music. Yeah. Regardless of this judgment that has been meted to you, especially from everybody in society, how have you still been able to stay grounded and also do the music and not fall to their pressure of, my dad is a pastor, so let me just fall back and you know, do what everybody wants me to do and just check um, my talents? I think the first thing I did was not to bring my family, family issues into my music issues. So it's like, mm. No, I don't think most people know anything about my family. That's what I said. Your dad cried. We don't yeah, know you. You don't tell us who he is. I don't even post my Who is he? What, what, is your my, father? what is his name? First? My dad's name Before is out there, him. though, but his name is Reverend Abraham Yamiadu. Which church? But then, <laughs> is there. Who is for your father's church? Oh, who go there? people who know me go to our ministry. But then oh. I try as much as possible <laughs> to separate the two. The reason why I started doing that was because right from the early age, like the way people always say, if you do this, how can your father go and tell somebody to mm. do that? But it's not like I'm even doing anything bad. So if my rap is going to cause issues for my father's ministry, I decided to like separate the two. Mm. So if I'm home, I'm home. If I'm working, I'm working. We are two different people with two different callings. And it's like, um, it hasn't been easy like to do this, but... I just stood my grounds. I'm a human being. It, sometimes it breaks me, but I still move on. Yeah. Mm. How are your parents? How are your parents taking all of this? Though, I mean, between you and your family, we may not know the internal conversations. You know, there are some mm -hmm. parents who are okay. Mm -hmm. you know, it's my yeah. it's my daughter's choice, my son's choice. I can't force my children to do what I am doing. So yeah. between you and then your father, maybe your mother, how are they taking yeah. all of this in? I think from an early age, my mom knew what I had because. I am music. It's not just rap. Like, I was born, anything about me was music. Because at an early age, they said I was just playing drums. Wow. And then I was singing in church. I was Everything about me was music. So my mom, I had a full support. All the uh, uh, auditionings that I wanted to go, it was my mom who was paying for it. Wow. wow. You know, but my mom passed away. And it's like it was left with me and my dad. But then I couldn't face him, so I had to run. Ooh. I left home after I went to who in Kumasi, I never came back. Wow. I was just looking for a way to come out. So it's like, today, you hear I'm here, and then it's like, because you're a girl, and you're supposed to come back home and you're away, your father will be thinking you're going wayward. Right. So it's not going to be a, an, an easy, easy thing. And it's yeah. like, I can't come home, because if I come home, I have to stop the music. 
uh, but they don't know what you're also doing out there. And when they talk about hip hop, you know the kind of people involved. They feel mm -hmm. like you're gonna end up like doing drugs, mm -hmm. doing a whole lot of bad things. So I just couldn't come home, and I was just on on the road. Like today, you hear I'm in the eastern region. Tomorrow. I'm here tomorrow in Kumas here. Yeah, it's like wherever I'm comfortable, I just go and I do my music. And so when my mom passed, like when my mom passed away, I felt like I had a responsibility because I have younger siblings. Right. And I have to be home. Yeah. No matter what is happening. So I started coming home and then my father started paying attention to um the way I carry myself, the people who I work with and mm. stuff. And mm. then he realized I'm not that bad like it seems. Mm. Cause he, my dad, I promised my dad I was not going to do anything music. I had to promise before wow. I was allowed to go to school. So Ooh. it's like, it's like me coming back there and it's like, oh, she's not bad after all. Like how people make it look like. Yeah. And then he started like not um, warning me again, but then it was like advising me. Mm -hmm. Why don't you wear this instead of this? Why don't you say this instead of this? So mm -hmm. it's like, that's how me and my dad started bonding again. But once in a while, he'll be praying for me and he'll say, God, I want my daughter <laughs> to stop this thing. Once in a while, it comes. Why don't you do gospel? Why don't you do gospel? But he supported me. And he knows, I don't know, he knows how great I have to be. Because my dad writes music. Wow. And my mom sings. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's something it's that I was thing. born with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to let you relive how you won your dad's trust again because you said you promised him that you're not going to do music and that's yeah. why you're allowed to go to school. Yeah. I'm just looking at my dad and I come back and say, I have reneged on the promises I made to you. <laughs> and he accepting me again yeah. and saying, finally, receive my blessings. Yeah, I think when I was going to school, my provisions, my bags, everything was packed. And it's like I have to go early morning. Mm. And that night, like midnight, I was called in the middle of the whole family to do that promise. Wow. wow. And I was hesitating, but it's like without a promise, I'm not going to school. Mm. And I also felt like going to school was my independence. So mm. I have never been to a boarding house or anything. So let me just promise. But after the promise, I actually meant the promise that I wasn't going to do anything concerning music. And I went to Kumase. And here I find myself seeing guys doing rap. And I'm like, what are they doing? But I can't do this day. Like, and, well, I promised my dad, let me forget about it. And somehow, somehow, I just find myself going there to do the rap. So I was just praying I never blow in a car. Mm. Because mm. I was always like because he didn't know what was happening in Kumasi. Yeah, and and because I was use, I was using my Eno is my real name. That's how they call me in the house. Yeah. And I was using Eno in Kumasi. But then when I was in Accra, I was using a nickname called Skebrat. Hey. So it's oh, like Skeb what? <laughs> Brat. Brat. So <laughs> I I was feeling like I'm dodging the bullet because my my dad don't know I'm using Eno. Wow. I mean I did say what. So it's like Eno say what in Kumasi. Nobody mm. actually knew it was the same person. And so I started getting management. And when I went to school, I was very young. Like, I was not even up, to, I was not 18 yet. Wow. So before somebody will sign me. And this was tertiary? Yeah. Mm. Before someone will sign me, the person has to, like, come see my dad. And that, that was when my freestyles and stuff also started coming to Accra. People were mm. hearing about me. Then my management at that time, they went home to go see my dad that we want to sign your daughter. Like, even behind my back. So, wow. It's like it was a problem for me. After that time, no chop money in school. Wow. It was my mom is the one who always hide and send me something small, you know. You oh, know. God my, bless mom, our mothers. my mom may she rest in peace, but she really needed to like stay to enjoy because she did everything. Mm. Yeah. Well, wait, so let me just chip in this. When I said God bless our mothers, the men in the production room are screaming. Please, God bless our fathers too. <laughs> I want, just so that they are satisfied. I want to ask, right, um, you've been on the scene for a while. Yeah. It's been four or five years now. And you've had successes, you've played shows, awards, all of that. Despite this, um, this conflict that you've had, yeah. are you doing this now? Because, I mean, with regards to the song, the confidence to put out this song now, is it because you've proven that this is a success, successful venture and it's not what they think? Or is it because now, at this point, you realize that you've come to fruition? It doesn't matter what anybody thinks anymore. 
You get it. You can do this mm. song for two reasons. Yeah. Either to say someone who make a yeah. your money or is mm. that you know where I am now. You can't do me focus. Yeah. No. I think aside myself, I have seen a lot of pastors' children who are also talented, not just music wise, they want to do other stuff, but because they are children of pastors, they have been told not to do it. And I it always like makes me reflect back to my past. And it's not even just the past, as I am, like, <laughs> as me as I am. Now. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of things that I, it's not just my family, like, maybe I'll say it's just my dad that is okay with me. It's not my whole family that is okay with me doing rap. Really? There's some side of my family that I can go. How are you living? Yeah. How are you living with this? And what's the relationship um, so, with you and the rest of them like? Because just not being in, you know, quote unquote, a, a cordial relationship yeah, or a good relationship with the rest of the I family. I only go where I'm accepted. Yeah. Like, wow. I'm not somebody who wants to mingle. If you don't want me here, I won't come. Because, um, mind you, like, I'm still the same girl they know before music. Because when I go to my dad's house, I go in a different look. I was born without pierce. Like I, I pierced my ear when I was in tertiary. Why? So, why? What happened? Um, they didn't pierce me. Wow. So it's like when I go home, I don't wear earrings. I don't wear necklace. I don't wear trousers. I don't wear like short dresses. Oh. I don't wear anything trouser. Is, is, okay. is it a, sp a spiritual thing? Like, you know, some churches frown on things like, like SD, that. Uh, is, mm -hmm. is that, because, is that the church that my, you're my, into? My, my religious background is the strict, strict, strict kind of religious mm. background that we didn't even have to perm our hair and stuff. Mm. Oh, okay. So okay. it's like a lot of people actually think I'm the devil now. Yeah, because yeah, like, like, like okay. you're an and, <laughs> the rebellion, you know, and, yeah. And the the petty petty things they want to talk to me, trying to relate it to it as the devil is nothing I have seen that the Bible is saying is a sin. Because I don't think if you perm your hair, a, a certain woman told me that she's scared for my mom's uh, heaven going because hey. when my mom huh? was dying, my mom had weave on. Ah, oh. and like if, the the uh, what they call them the. Oh, mm -hmm. they call them something tickets. Or the, the undertaker put on a... Uh, no, no, no. My no, mom had no, died. Before, like, she, had she had a weave sewed on her hair. Oh. On her head before, before she passed. So she, she, told me, <laughs> she told me that somebody went to heaven and uh, the person had earrings. But the woman was so righteous. But when she got to the gates of heaven... They said unless she will be able to take the earring back to Ed, she can't what enter heaven. So the woman, the a very close friend like, of my so mom, backwards. are you serious? You know, yes, I'm so very serious. So backwards. Me, I've I have seen a lot. It's only God's like will for me to be here because mm. there are lots of times that I felt like, you know, every business has its ups and downs. Mm. So anytime I go down, then it makes me feel like, oh, maybe what they are saying is true because mm. I'm very very talented. And why am I struggling? Mm. Maybe it's true. I want I want to know, know. Wow. I want to know that seeing all this, right, stories like that, this is what you have to do to get into heaven and all that. Why are you doing music? Are you doing music because you are just so confident that this is your calling and your purpose? Or are you doing it to make a statement? Because, I mean, you've mentioned heaven. You've mentioned family. You are taking a lot of sacrifices. Yeah right to wear your necklaces and your earrings and dye your hair and do yeah. rap and be on tv and in short skirt and music video you are doing everything you want to do i want to know why first Despite, of all <laughs> i will really want to make heaven if there is heaven i mm. really want to go to heaven when i die that is one but i'm the same person in church listening to the word of god and they said um Talent is given to you, a, a parable that there was a talent given mm -hmm. to somebody and, and he didn't do anything it. about it. I feel like this is my calling. I'm talented. I know it. I don't need somebody to tell me. And why should I sit on it? Because somebody thinks this. You see, this music thing in me, I cannot live without music for a week. Wow. Like, if I don't want to do it, it still calls me. Like, I can be so down and the only thing that can lift me up is music. It's, it, I might not be performing, but I can hear my own song and it will lift me up. Mm. 
I can see something about myself that has to do with music and I feel like I did this and it lifts me up. So I feel like that's my calling and I'm not doing it to prove them wrong. I'm proving myself right. Like I have to do it to make myself feel okay. That I chose the yeah. right thing. Like it's it, it's it's a trauma. Like it, it goes on and on in my head. Mm. I don't want to, like I've said this over and over. I did a performance at uh, Ghana Miss Niger. Mm -hmm. I I was like, by then it was Davido, Tiwa Savage, you know, all of them on the show. And I was like, what am I going to do to be different? What am I, because I was underground at that time. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do for my name to be mentioned? I was like, okay, let's use the resurrection of Yas and Tua as a team. So we brought a coffin on stage at yeah, that time. And uh, people bashed me and all those things, you understand? Only for people not to see it as an ad, uh, like a craft or something. People were relating it to spiritual stuff mm. that um i have joined the illuminati <laughs> i have joined the cult and that is a ritual they did for me that to to lift me up from the underground mm. and what 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 so um people that knew me were not actually seeing the you know they knew as a christian but then they actually accepted the ritual thing and took it to church and they wow. put my picture on the floor. They prayed. That Wait, which church? My father's church. Oh, it wasn't my, yes, it wasn't my oh. dad who led that thing. It was some junior pastors who did that thing. They put my picture on the floor. I was not there. And my kid brother brush then called me that. They've called my kid sisters. They want to use it as, as a point, point of, of contact. contact. <laughs> that if I do wow. anything that has to do with music, it shouldn't work. Um, if somebody calls me for a show, the stage, the the, the speaker should blow. Oh. And, wow. And my music should sound like in Kwasi Asem in people's ears. And so my siblings were not okay about it. And they warned them not to tell me. And they told me. So I had the thing. I was like, this junior pastor also has my number. But I couldn't confront him. I kept quiet. And that month, I was scared to do anything music. I wanted to perform. And I'm scared. Is this prayer actually mm -hmm. going to work? work or not? And the little thing that happens with my career, I feel like, God, are you turning your back against me mm. because people are seeing this? Am I actually on the wrong path? It was like hell for me. It was affecting me. Psychologically. And so I felt like God gave me this talent. Mm. God, direct me mm. and let me do what is best with this talent. And mind you, if you are born in any religion or anything, it doesn't mean what your father or your mother tells you is the only right thing. You are also given the wisdom and the mind to research and know more. So it's like, I have read the Bible too. I'm not the perfect Christian, but I have learned also that I can do this music and I can impact. When I when a pastor is preaching and it's like, and say, I need you, my name, did this so go and work and stuff and stuff. My music do something is also telling girls that go and work. Mm. And people are listening to my music. I influence, I do stuff. So maybe this is my calling, but not holding the Bible to preach doesn't make me a sinner. Mm. Yeah. Well, how did your father react? I'm just being curious, you know, for, yeah. to see his junior mm -hmm. pastor, you Doing know, do that. this to his daughter. I wasn't there, but it took a long time. I, I, you know, remember, I have already had a long break going home and now I'm home. Mm. And that thing happened. It took a long, a long time, almost a year before I went home that time too. Wow. And I was not able to call. I was not able to do anything. So when I got there, my dad was like, I have, I have like rejected my family and I've taken mm. another people as family. That's the only thing he said. I said, no. And it was awkward, but we were okay again. And I was like, if I knew it was going to be like this, why didn't I come home long ago? But up till now, I'm I'm not seeing eye to eye with that pastor. And I, I think imagine. he's not even in our church anymore. Mm. Great. I but the acceptance, so your father has accepted you. And, yeah. and the congregants now have accepted you. They call me Barony now. Oh. You know, it's like they are happy to see me on TV mm. and all those things. Because they know, like they knew that was my mother's prayer. The, mm. All the women's fellowship people, mm. whenever they have fasting and prayers and they ask for my mother's prayer request, my mother, <coughs> my mother will take my CD wow. and go and pray. So they knew my mom wanted this so bad. You understand? Mm. So it's like they are happy. Oh, I'm serious yeah. as well. You can yeah. hear from her voice yeah. that she's you scary. Know? With, you know, oh God. Please, we need okay. tissue. tissue we need tissue in here. If you can help us with I tissue. Know. Thank God you're wearing shade. At least yeah, it's cover, it's cover the tears. Yeah. But I'm serious as well, you know, like to see your I father. I have goosebumps, yeah. actually. I yeah. want to just comment on the style of your sound, right? Just 
uh, a breather, a breakaway. Yeah, from, from where we are. yeah, true. I want to comment on your style. I passed a comment earlier on that you sound very aggressive, almost almost like angry, almost like there's something you want to say it right. I know how rap is that either you're a battle style rapper or you're an aggressive rapper. But talking to you over the last 10, 15 minutes, you seem very calm and laid Thank back you. and soft spoken and all that, right? I want to know if these pent up emotions, everything from not being able to go home for up to a year, people praying against your the same hustle you are hustling, all that. Is that what we are hearing as rage and anger in your in your delivery? I don't I don't really have much friends. I know I'm not somebody who like goes to talk about my issues with people. Mm. I I like to put it in my music. Mm. Sometimes some even if I'm doing a hip hop song and you see me go hard, sometimes it's because of the way I was feeling at that time and I was writing. Sometimes you see me go very soft and it's, it's it depends on my feeling. I have trained myself to do that with my music and I, all the times that I use my emotions to write music, it goes well for me. Mm. And that is what you always see. Okay. With, with what you said in, in your conversation, you've mentioned, you know, having to go down and then the prayers. And when you dip, you wonder if it's the prayers that um, are working against you, right? Yeah. When those things happen, at the point where you make music and it's not going how you want it to go, are you mm -hmm. able to sit back and re-strategize and say, let me do this and do that and probably bounce back? And then how does that also affect you? Yeah. We know that you're already out there, but, you know, you're pushing and it's not. Yeah, I believe in times and seasons. Like, Miss G, you've known me. Mm -hmm. You know how it all started for me. Um, I, I, I didn't start with anything. There are times where you see me with a record label and it looks so promising. And then everything goes back and it's like, I have to start from... I have started, like, from the scratch, like, three times. Sometimes I start with no social media accounts because they take mm -hmm. it all from me. Mm. Three years ago, I started with no YouTube account. Just three years ago, I had to start again, everything afresh. And you know, I have seen how far my music has taken me all the time when I put my mind to it. So anytime it goes down, <clears throat> I don't look at people and say, this person is going, why am I not going? I look at myself yesterday and I feel like I'm way better than how I was yesterday. Mm. So why can't I still push myself? So if you are going somewhere, you can't actually find the road. It's best you come back and then you look at the map and, you know, you strategize and you move like you were saying. I, I always, as a human being, it's not always going to be like that. Mm. There are sometimes it's going to be bumpy and stuff. And I still just work hard and I just move on. So yeah. if I can follow up with uh, Lenny's question, um, I, as a follow-up to her question, there's never been a time when you felt that truly, truly this spiritual thing is, a, is working. You know, how there's a belief system we have. I believe in, you know, what I, my eye doesn't see, which yeah. is the underworld or whatever <clears throat> it is. Yeah. And if I have people who are, and they say worth carries power, it carries volume. Yeah. If I have people who are constantly, you yeah. know, speaking against my craft, praying against my craft, going wherever to ensure that my music does not, you know, make the success or get the success that it should get. Maybe I'll sit there and say, maybe it's truly working. Have you ever yeah. started to think that it's truly working? Gone on a fast <laughs> for that, gone to the mountains to go and pray, you you know, I actually mm -hmm. believed it and worked towards maybe the cancellation or, you know, suspension of it or something. Yeah. I think my dad, this is how my dad trained us. There are some pastors who will call you and then they will tell you that this is what I've seen about you. Mm -hmm. You are dying. Mm. You understand? Are you accepting that the pastor is saying you are dying, so you are going to die? No. My dad always told us that even if the person is the, the biggest prophet and the person is telling you that, start praying in your head and start refusing it and never believe it for yourself because the God reveals to redeem. Mm -hmm. So, me, anytime anybody says anything negative, because I'm a human being, it will shake me. But then I don't accept. I feel like if you accept it, that is when it actually works on you. And I'm also giving the, the will to also pray. Like, I can also pray and say no to it. And so if you say this about me and I accepted that, okay, this is what you said, so this is how I'm going to end up. I think I'll go down. Even the psychological trauma alone can bring you down and mm. you never do anything. And then they will win because they said it. 
and you also didn't do anything about it. But I also prayed about it. I didn't just sit down. I prayed about it and I worked. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I have, I have, I have um, why is Satan allowed to torture people in hell for disobeying the same God? Yeah, that's one of my favorite. Like, it's a titillating, <laughs> eye opening, yeah. Yeah. intriguing, thought provoking. Yeah, I, you I, know, I said it this morning when yes. we're here. That, like, I thought about it. I'm like, hmm. it's, it's a, this, it's, this it's is a, not. It's a, it's a clear, <laughs> it's a clear statement on the often obvious hypocrisy mm -hmm. we find in religion, especially Christian religion. Yeah. And I want to know that. One, is this subliminal to the bigger big picture of what you've told us about the imperfect people who go to church but will focus on Enno's life? Mm -hmm. About the people who, despite seeing Enno being successful in this, still will not open their eyes and say that, oh, it's not what we thought, let's love her. And then in general, on how we are as Ghanaians in accepting things that might not be traditional, seeing a girl... I'm sure the whole world has talked to you about the same thing. Mm -hmm. You're a girl. That's yeah. one problem already. The yeah. second one is, ah, oh, papa, son, I'm a pastor. Yeah. Second problem already. Those three questions. Is, I know it's loaded, but we can mm -hmm. take it off that same line you, you gave us yeah. about the devil disobeying God, and now he has become prefect, punishing us for the same thing he did. That yeah. hypocrisy. I want you to comment on that because it's in your rhymes, and I want to know the process that led yeah. to that. I think as I doing it based on my story, I also didn't just do it for myself. I did it for all of us. And it's a question, it's something that keeps bothering me because I feel like this is a, an angel who was like thrown away from heaven for disobedience. Mm -hmm. And um, we also going to him in hell, like we're going to hell and he's ruling hell. So what's moral right? I don't really get it. Mm. So it's like a question I put in there for every listener to also debate on it for us to understand if there is a pastor who can actually tell us more about it. And recently I had a conversation with some pastors and they were telling me, some said, Satan is not going to rule hell and vengeance is of God and the health, we are, uh, hey, I'm not saying we, <laughs> all sinners, <laughs> sinners and everybody is going to be put in hell. We are all sinners. Together with the devil will be burnt and he's not, somewhere also saying that well, he's going to take dominion over hell. hell. Yeah. So it's like, it was a debate that like two pastors were having about this song. I was like, okay, let's leave it for the judgment day. Is that what yeah. you want your music to do? Do you want to yeah. poke the conversations? And, and then get these, uh, get poke the, the audience and then get these conversations. Started. Most it's of my started. music always causes conversations. Like, even if it's a word play that people think is so controversial, it's still like conversation. People will be like, she said that she didn't say that. You know, God is a woman was a title that people mm -hmm. were like, is God a man or a woman? There was a song that I asked, um, uh, let me say it in chi. Means me boy drama and kitten kitten na obi in kumni pa then you be judging men on the, the same, same level. Mm -hmm. Like you understand, so it's always a conversation. I I we do I don't know. I would like to know. There's that same way somebody also want to know. So if my music comes out and it's like we are debating, some maybe someone will tell us. Yeah. So so, <clears throat> so what do you think has worked for you as as Enno Baroni? Is this the top provoking lines, the controversial lines? Because in our space. It's two mm -hmm. things. It's either you come through the channel of controversy, yeah. where your lyrics or your songs are provocative or they suggest some kind of conversations that our culture does not accept, mm -hmm. or you have some kind of strategy, you know, like you know, a, a one hit strategy that is, you know, sustained throughout the period. For you, what would you say? Would you say you came through the controversial mm -hmm. channel, or it's just it's just your hard work, like you say? Me, I never knew I was controversial. It's like, it's <laughs> people who mention my name and they say that she's a controversial rapper. It's like, me, I just do me. Mm. And then I give it to management and they feel like, this, this, this is cool. Let's put this one out. Mm. And when it comes, it raises conversations. I am happy when people are talking about my music because mm. the music is for the people. Mm. So I'm just happy. And I, I don't really think I have a particular strategy that if I do it like this, um, it would be like this. No, mm. yeah, uh, there should be an agenda, but then I don't have a particular strategy for all my music. So when you yeah. say you are, you are, you are the king of queens, because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm coming back to this because when the when you won the award over, um, what do you call it? Uh, Amarado, I believe. What that was it was a Ghana Music Awards. 
Over, there was right. SAC in was, there, there was, was medical, medical in there, there was the strong man in best there. performance, mm -hmm. right? And the conversation was heavy yeah. on why you didn't deserve to win it, you mm -hmm. know. And I don't know if you've spoken to it, but I just want you to expand a bit further. Okay. That you you have hard hitting bars, mm -hmm. and it's only fair to call it a king of queens because personally, if you ask me, since the days of Abiranana, I have not seen someone as loud as you in terms mm -hmm. of a woman rapping, yeah. right? And to go head to head with the men, the men, you know, because the industry is heavily male, male driven, yeah. right? You have come in and even listening to your story now, I'm beginning to appreciate you more because mm -hmm. having to navigate all these things to come out, you know, and still be mm -hmm. not as I don't is it accept that I, I don't the question I'm trying to ask you is do you think that people have now come to accept you that you know what this is Eno Barani let's let's let her be. I was named after Enoa Joa Mankwa. Come on. Eh, Eno Akusia Mankwa. I am Enoa Joa Mankwa. Mm. And Eno Akusia Mankwa, it was a queen that um, all the male kings like reports to. Mm. Mm. In, yeah, which, in which in uh, which traditional area? Yeneso. Where? Yeneso. 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 Mm. Yeah. Okay. And that's my what great grandma. That for those Ashanti who, region. Ashanti region. Okay. You understand? And it's like I've always been told that I do my stuff like hair. Okay. And me coming into this music thing, I use my name Eno because Eno means mother, like Obapini. Right. And somehow my name worked for me because it's like I I don't answer to any woman mm. when it comes to rap. Mm. Mm. And um, th there are lots of females that I've seen call themselves queens. But I, I felt like uh, just being a normal queen, like every queen was... Something it was regular, and then like with the story of my great grandma, I felt like then I'm the king of queens, mm. and it's like every name actually has an impact because I I started saying yeah you know because I'm the mother of all rappers and I'm the king of queens. I started saying I'll be the first woman to win the best trap award when it was just my first interview with Dr. Pounds. Wow, and I have that <clears throat> video Keep on like YouTube. You understand? It's wow. like all those things I kept saying for myself, I was not just saying it for saying sake. I, I was like, let me work towards it mm. with no plan. With n I didn't even know how I'm going to get there. And I won that Best Drop Award, which looked impossible because there was yeah. no even a female category at for all. females. At all. Then I started saying I'm the best female rapper in Africa when I have never stepped out of Ghana. Mm. Mm. And I won like Afrima for Best Female Rapper in Africa. You understand? So it's like I call myself those things to like give myself a big target to reach. Mm -hmm. That is why I give myself those names. Not like I want to boss over anybody. Mm -hmm. It's for myself. So do you, so do you do you do you believe that for you it's a cocktail of positive declarations or daring declarations? Yeah, plus I mean, talent speak plus good for yourself. Right. And let it work on you. But a lot of people have been speaking good for themselves. and It's, it's, it's just not, not working. It's not, it's really not working. just speaking. I mean, speak good for yourself and then you What's target it. You work, you work towards it and then it comes. Mm. I Angels and demons are all working together for my good. So stop. Yeah. <laughs> Unpack it for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not perfect. I have my own demons. Like, when I say I have my own demons, it doesn't mean I, I, I'm demonic. Like, I have my bad side and my good side. Same way when you bring it to the press, we have good publicity and bad pu publicity all mm. together working for my good. And that is all I meant. You are not afraid of, of backlash. Because from everything you've told us and the journey you've been on, one would expect for you to be overly cautious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, let me not say this, then I know they'll say that last time I said this, crowd, they did this, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, you don't care. You are going out and giving it to them as mm -hmm. hard and raw as mm -hmm. you can. And I want to know if you you see this as your journey, like as your 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 purpose as a musician to be unapologetically honest, even mm -hmm. if it means people will clearly misunderstand. Because what we we've seen a lot of rappers, musicians that they start like this, I'm the this, I'm the that, but yeah. every time the crowd roars, yeah. and then finally you have a very watered down yeah artists that you don't even know again but you have 
controversy is like part of your brand now. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it, it or not. not. Yeah. That's what if you true. say A is for Apple, B is for Ball, the people best rapper will break it. Then. That's, that's that line. You know, King, of, <laughs> King of Queens. <laughs> you, you say you shouldn't say it. Have you, you heard say, that line? No. Before you continue, you, you haven't heard that. Break it down. Now, best rapper, no cry, then, 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 success. Hey, which one is that? So, so what did you say? Rap that one. Rap, what did you say? I have a lot, so I don't know which one. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, unless you The, the way you talked about the best rapper, <clears throat> now, I'm a best rapper, no cry, then. I think I think that was a, that was a, that was the King of Queens. Um, I think that was the uh, God is a woman. No, but even King of Queens. Oh, that, that, okay, okay. The first line is God is a woman. Yeah, so say, let no, me. No, I was like, this is the birth of a new era. Mm -hmm. for Not the first line. Uh huh. For King is some better sack letter. Is that that? Have you heard? No, Have you no, heard? So because God is a woman. I was trying to say it's Have a birth of a new era, like the females' era. So yeah. tell the, so the male king should come and collect sacrifice. <laughs> tell whoever is the king to come for a sacrifice because, because girls are ruling now. Okay. Mm. Yeah. You see, Just another like controversy. Around the, world, the name girls, alone, girls. Yeah. God is a woman. Controversy. Yeah. King of queens. Controversy. <laughs> so I am beginning to think that as much as people naturally look for that negativity in everything you are saying or that, so that, code, them that context. Yeah, exactly it's now become like what Eminem was doing right yeah. when Eminem came if he says a they say ah yeah, if he says b yeah, they say yeah, ah and yeah, then yeah, after a while you're like you know what this is what you want me to be and i'll do it let's do it i don't are you there <laughs> are we going to expect more <laughs> blunt truth from eno just i look up <laughs> <laughs> I see that the question is hard. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Down, down, down. So Look I have, I have, I have gotten to that point where I know whether I do A or B, people will talk. Yes, yeah, so I know. So yeah, does that so, mean that now um, here and here? Yeah, I'm me. I am happy. All the conversations are always about my music, and it's not about you know when to do cooking and you are discussing. Mm. So if it's actually about the music that is giving headache and people don't arts. understand, I don't care. I'll just give it the honest truth that is inside me. Yeah. Discussing your arts. So so with with your music and then mm. with honest truth, I know that you do um, your writing yourself. Yeah. Right. With the song. Don't judge me. Yeah. Um, you put D wheels on. Yeah. Was there? Um, did you guys collab on the right as well, or was it? Was it just how she got? Or was it just um, you? Was it just you doing um, the writing and giving it to him, or did you guys write together? Um, I think the Wills is a very good musician, and I'll say it's a collaboration. That's all I'll say. Mm -hmm. He's very good, and on getting him, I think after I did the music, after I recorded it. The whole song, it was lacking something. I needed a story to back it. A lot of people know me as Eno, but not everybody knows me as the Pastor's child of it. You understand? Mm. And then this is me seeing this guy rapping on TikTok. Mm. And I feel like this guy is so dope. He's a hard rapper. And I, I linked up. I'm like, yo, I have this thing. I gave him the concept and he was like, I'm in America. I'll come next week. Wow. And then he came down. We did the song, shot the video. So dope. So it was, it was, it was a collaboration. That's all I was saying. Wait, I, I, have, I just want to have one question. Okay, go mm -hmm. ahead. The chorus of the hook is so good. Okay. I don't know why you kept it short. Why, why, did, why did you keep mm -hmm. that part short? Was there a reason, or you wanted people to replay? You wanted the song to have a replay value? Cause yeah, because you are replaying it now. Right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's it was so. intentional then. Yeah. <laughs> because the hook, the hook is amazing. But yeah, Thank talk to you. us about the that part where the wheels comes into. You yeah. know the play with with this hook and yeah. how he sang because you could clearly tell that Diego himself has equally faced. You know, I think he's even faced more in the public's eye mm -hmm. with what you have also gone through because yeah. he happens to be the son of, of a, a very known charis yeah. charismatic leader. You mm -hmm. know, and with what we've seen him do on the social media trends and whatnot, his name is obviously always in the mouth of people yeah. being discussed and stuff like that. So, like Lenny said. Yeah. When you guys met, mm -hmm. what was that conversation like? Even though it was music, <laughs> but what was the first conversation? Funny like? enough, when we met, eh, the conversation was like on on social media before we actually met. Uh -huh. So, when we so met, you wanted to in the DM? Yeah, I DM'd him okay. and I was like, I wanted us to do this. He said, told me about it and I gave him the concepts. He said, this is a good concept mm. because of this, 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 this. And we were like, who? When we met, we didn't talk who. Are you serious? Like, when we met, no, we started recording. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, um, he, he hadn't heard the music. I had told him about the concept, but he hadn't mm. heard it. So immediately I met him. I was like, yo, 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 listen. So immediately he heard it. He just put his headphones on. 
we recorded before we were like, Gio, this is dope. We were just talking about music. Wow. It was music, 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 and I left. And it was like a midnight recording too. So it's mm. like, after I think that the, the recording, we were having a few conversations, but not about... Like sounds of sounds and no, 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 no. It was just he's a hip hop artist, yes, so we were talking about yeah. rapping, like how to put more stuff together. Yeah, but you get Vimo, you know, for all the people you could think of a collaboration <laughs> with, you know, the wills and you Another know that controversy. I, I, I had, like you get like <laughs> where did that Vim come from? Apart from he's not the only pastor's hmm. child that you know. Yeah, yeah but he's the only pastor's child I know that's hip hop. Yeah. Did you talk oh. about your shared oh. trauma? That's what I was no, going to say. Well, I, you, 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 you connected she because... She said it she said it nah. didn't. No, is it the thing. connection? Is it because you know that, look, this guy has tasted, you know, <clears> what I'm, <throat> I've gone through <throat> or what I went through, and it would be nice for him to also tell us his side of the story. You see, the pastors out there are known, but I actually don't know their kids. Mm. Mm. Oh. And he is the one that I know is a pastor's child. <laughs> aside that... Pull up. Aside that, I know he's a rapper. Mm. I like that line. I know some pastor's kids, but some of them are very, very quiff. Mm. And they won't want to like do anything with a hip-hop artist. Mm. Mm. So even mm. him, I didn't know if he was going to do it or not. It was a trial lock thing. And when I asked him, he said, yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Uh, now that uh, you okay. two have met and have created this Don't Judge Me, are we going to see more collaborations from you? And probably just moving it from one song to an album. I would love to see a D. Wills, yeah. Eno Baroni. Eno. Yeah, yeah, trust me, he has like more songs out there, like in there that are about to come out. Mm. So much dope songs. Like he's a very good rapper, trust me. So watch out. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I want to find out from you, yeah. Two, two, two children of pastors having to do the opposite of what their fathers do. There's nothing opposite. We were just preaching. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, when, I say, oh, when, I say, oh, when I say opposite, the activity, the activity of hip-hop, yeah. the activity of rap. I mean, some people even say there's gospel rap, there's Christian rap, but we'll get yeah. to that. Don't you think that you are now preaching the same of rebelliousness, of rebellion, you know, for those who are equally in that same you know, situation? Because there are some pastors who are still talking to their children to, mm -hmm. to do the law's will, which is come to church, you know, have a ministry and so on and so forth. But you have two known kids yeah. of pastors, right? Yeah. I mean, you're not a kid, I mean, you're not a kid, but I'm just saying that. <laughs> yeah, Don't you think it. that mm -hmm. on hindsight, the sermon is more or less like rebellion, like do what you have, to, because you, you had it easy. You, I, I, I won't say easy, but at least yeah. your father, you know, extended yeah. his arms, received you yeah. even after several tries and everything but some other children are are not, are not getting it easy some people have like hit my dms with this thing mm. like we are rebelling and stuff mm. i don't think so i'm trying to let you know the person that you are condemning thinking that um see this is what they say mm. they say every man of god spend time um preaching and praying for people and they do say they say they don't have time for their kids mm. and so when the devil wants to get through to them they use their kids mm. so if you're a man of god and you want to believe that the devil has, is using your child mm. then that so. is when you allow the devil to actually use your child mm. the devil comes to destroy and steal but that's when you actually allow him when um um when uh there are people in the Bible who were men of God's children, right. Eli, Eli's, Eli's kids, Eli's and they kids, did yeah. all those things. Mm. But they allowed themselves. You can have a child who wants to do hip-hop or anything different. Mm. Yours is to direct the child, but you cannot force the child to end up as you. So I am saying, me, the person I am thinking I'm evil, when I pray, God still answers. Mm. So don't judge me and think I am evil. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. Because... I don't know how to put it. Like, the fact that I'm doing hip-hop doesn't mean I'm, I'm bad. If my dad had actually accepted to, like, accepted me to do a hip-hop thing since I started when I was a kid, mm. maybe I would have been way successful than I am right now. But mm -hmm. because my dad <clears throat> didn't accept it, excuse me, <clears throat> because my dad didn't accept it in the beginning, I had to run. When I was running, I, I fell in. A whole lot of bad contracts, mm. a whole lot of like bad places. There were people who wanted to take advantage of me because I want to come out. Mm. And uh, but if 
at that time when the first management came and they said your da your daughter is underage, we want to work with her and like okay. Um okay, you want to do rap? And my father was like fully supportive. What will I hide? Mm. But I have to run away. I have to be doing this, go to this boys here, 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 and things will be happening. And I'll be feeling bad running back home. Like, it's like, I don't know where to go. Mm. You understand? So you as, you as a parent, you are just supposed to guide your kid. You are not supposed to impose things on your child. Some are very, very stubborn. Right. But then still listen to the person. The person has, like, something the person want to do. Direct the person. That's it. I have a... I have a follow-up in what you're saying. I love what you said because a lot of, especially rap and hip-hop artists, um, the alternative guys, the underground guys, even some of the mainstream guys, they'll tell you that doing rap or hip-hop in Ghana, there was always that stereotype, not just because your father is a pastor, yeah. no matter what your father or your mother mm. did, there was that misconception about rap. I want to know if this, this uh, song... Mm -hmm. It's very sp uh, very specific to the spiritual, the religious whole. Yeah. I want to know if you have intentions of opening up the conversation, just like you said now, through your music, to be more of a, an, advocate. A, an advocate, exactly, and a, an inspiration, and to give that clarity yeah. to the parents out there who are listening. Like you said, that your daughter or your son wanting to do this is not the beginning of doom. Yeah. And the earlier you jump on board and support it, the more you can protect and be the better parent. Yeah. You know, I, I want to, I really want to, because you yeah. have the platform, yeah. you have that brand, and you are noted for being able to speak your truth regardless who it will be or how yeah. it will come out. I think I, I've started, you know. like, I've been talking about that thing, like, most of the times I've been talking about parents. I actually wanted to bring it, an EP out with this song called, like, The Pastor's Daughter. But yeah. I, I just stopped. And then I was like, ruthless. And I still just stopped because of certain reasons. But then I always tell parents that um, um, if this is what your child actually wants to do, yours is to focus on, like, you just pray for the, the kid. Because being a hip-hop artist doesn't mean I'm a bad person. At first, I understand our parents because we didn't actually have some examples they were supposed to look up to. But now we have a lot. Sakode was a rapper. Is a rapper. Um, you let me use our, our musical president, our past musical president, who was also a rapper. Obuo, Obuo. you understand? I am a rapper. There are so many rappers out there who are also doing good in life. And people always thought it's not a career. My dad has accepted me, but my dad always says, rap is a hobby. <laughs> 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 you know? So it's like, uh, because a lot of people were seeing that thing that... Uh, at first, you hear the musician went to do drugs. He went to swallow this one, this one. So no parents want to see their kids fail. So they were like, you don't have to do it. But I think it's up to the parents now to know that this is a career that if you focus on, it's just like a doctor cashing out. Your child can also cash out from there in a good way. I want to read a tweet okay. uh, here. Uh, it's from Real Con. He says, guys, at Enu Baroni is going through a whole lot than meets the eye. The eye sorry. She's carrying trauma, heavy trauma. <laughs> My yeah. heart and prayers goes out to her. You're carrying trauma. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, seen, I've seen it. I've yeah. seen it, but I don't let it weigh me down. Mm. And it's not actually an issue anymore. Yeah. I want to know about the feedback before Lily comes in. Uh, yeah. The feedback from the Will's camp. Yeah. I'm particular about it because you have done this over and over. Yeah. Whether we like it or not, this is your space. Whether we are criticizing you or not, whether the church likes it or not, you've come to stay. You've proven that to us. Yeah. But this young man is who... Society is yet to accept that he says he wants to do this. I'm sure people will say, hey, watching now Kwabun Senjin, where we are trying to pull him <laughs> off. We are trying to pull him off this, yeah. and you are taking him back there. Yeah. What's been the feedback from his camp to you? I think right when the artwork came out, my management were like, people were hitting my DM, wanting us not to bring the song, and their church members, and wow. this, this, this. Wow. You know, and... They didn't even know the kind of song that was even coming and they started judging us. When the song came, th there are some comments that are even in open sites that this guy is demonic and you putting 
yourself with him, you are going to go down. Watch me. Like, um, <laughs> the rules guy is the money. That's what somebody came to write. A whole lot of people have said a whole lot of negative things and a whole lot of people have said positive things. Mm. All I, I care about is the Rose is so happy about this collaboration. And I am happy about it. So I don't really want to pay attention to what anybody will say. Because the things that I said in the song, I never um, said our parents are doing this or that I'm just talking to everybody. And it's not just for pastor's children. It's for all of us to have a reality check. Some, like I'm talking about people who cannot speak English, yet they want to go to English-speaking churches. Mm. And it's like time to pray. And you're like, oh, God, oh, <laughs> God, you are, <laughs> it's like you are saying things that, well, don't understand. yes, just be real Arrows. with yourself and your mm. God. That's why I'm like, when you pray, oh, one pair, oh, bro. I know they are dreaming a crowd because me and Tika said, be a papa, be a sa. So, like, I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You, you if you can crowd. speak English, mm. uh. you understand English and you pray in English. There's nothing wrong with it because. Uh. Uh, 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 God will answer you. Like God so you're talking about but it's like you can't, you can't speak themselves. English mm. and you want to pray in English because people are watching or people are around. So the fake you are not praying. Mm. Yeah. And aside that, it's like recently me an episode and Abiana we went to church and a certain woman called me. Oh. And <laughs> and she I, as respectful as I was to the woman, I was like, hi. And she asked me, why this? Ah. Ah. <laughs> huh? And In church? Yes. I looked at her and I was like, my manager was like, she said, I had a pink suit on. Uh -huh. I still have the picture with Gipsy Auntie on my page right now. Pink suit with this hair. She said, why the pink pink? Ah. Why the pink pink? <laughs> How does that concern you? Hey, hey. And I didn't say anything. I was just watching it. And the woman asked my manager, I don't want to bro for <laughs> <laughs> so if I had like responded, responded yeah, they'll react to you. Yeah, the bad one, yeah, right? Yeah, but you see, the church is there to save every soul. Mm. The church is not there to condemn people, and it's not only the righteous that is supposed to enter the church. Mm. But when people enter church, they're like, "Hey, and then they're most mm. I said we don't even belong mm. here. Mm. Yeah, yeah, understand? But I do that to people I know. Like, I see people <laughs> really? like Jericho. I, I, you know. I'm sorry. I used to do that. Like repent. <laughs> let, let me repent. repent. I used to see people right I know in the media space at Jericho. Uh, I remember very well. Um, Candyman. He's now in the US. I said, Hey, what's You know, I said, Pray for I do that. Prayers is for everybody. It's a reflex. It's a reflex. I don't think it's a reflex. It's society. No, no, it's a reflex. I personally think it's a reflex. Like, I don't think you meant you meant any malice when you said Uswabaha. You, get you know me. what? Like, you know, even let, me, let me cut you before you go for your Lori first, not you. <laughs> <laughs> the Ghanaians, we have a problem of differentiating between humor and ridicule. Mm. First, yeah. a lot of people ridicule people, not thinking about how the person will feel, feel and yeah. react, and they'll say, Oh, now nah, I was just joking. Yeah. Yeah. We confuse ridicule and humor a lot. Mm. That's why we see someone like me, myself, like let me use myself mm. as an example. Mm. I posted something on Twitter about it so mm. I can say it. Mm. I went into an office, and a lady I knew, an old friend, was like, hey, Your stomach camo. And then, out of reflex, because I'm Sarah, <laughs> I said, Oh, Charlie, I want to match you. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> you, you, you understand? Yeah. She thought she was being funny right. in the middle of her office. But you also mm. matched her and energy. I was also being funny. But mm. when I came back down from the elevator, she was sitting there. She didn't even raise her head to look at me. She was oh, angry. No. But would you say that was a reflex? Yes. She, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And that's what I'm saying that yeah. we know how to dish it. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but when it's reciprocated, then it's offensive. So, yeah. in her example, if she had responded on the yeah. pink, 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 it, that would have trended more than. Mm. I'm looking at the picture now. What is wrong with this outfit? What's yeah, wrong with this? Is this it, right? Yeah, yeah. This, What's wrong with yeah. this? That you fully covered. At church? Yeah, and yeah. fully covered. You the team don't cover, they so, say, oh, hey. Now you're you covered. They say, why pink pink? You know, I mean, come on. Anyway, and it was, I, it was even like a program at church. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. give the auntie's 25 years anniversary and we went to celebrate her. And they saw who two gospel don't want to be. I don't know. <laughs> and you see the video of me singing gospel that went viral. It's like, I don't know why people think... Like you're not supposed to it, sing it. All yeah, your no, but, but that's that, not the first time. Yeah, that is what I've been doing my whole life before I knew rap. Like, yeah, I sing in church. Okay, thank you. So, for, no, it's thank no, you for I, getting I, us there. I, I, I wanted think, to ask. Okay, she go ahead. We had Kobi Sam 
on our show on well, yeah, on our show mm -hmm. a couple of weeks back, and he spoke about being a contemporary, a gospel, a con gospel. Well, yeah, contemporary gospel artist, and yeah. the difficulty, and them not being able to accept the rap form. So mm -hmm. they get the sense that he wants to do something for the gospel, for the church. Yeah. But because he has packaged it in rap mm -hmm. and the no go, the way he has cut his hair, why are you wearing that? All the regular questions you are bringing up yeah. now. And I want to know that as you are crusading for this yeah. acceptance and deeper thought, yeah. do we should we expect to see you collaborating more with the rappers who are, should I say, on the other side? Not that there's a good mm -hmm. and bad side, but of course, he is invested in a career in yeah. gospel rap. I think I should have even thought that when I was doing my last album. My last album, I wanted to feature only females, but I wanted a gospel uh, female artist in there. Funny enough, I contacted about four female gospel musicians and they turned me down. Wow. Yeah. Turned you down? Yes. Did they with with reasons, when, exactly. What, like, I think one person gave me a tangible reason, but the rest, it was like, you could feel the judgment. Mm. Can you, can it was you, a rap song. Like, it was a rap gospel. I said that. And... I was like, you want to well, send them the song? Do you, you want to name these artists? The song is out. No, I don't want to name them. Okay. Are they you young or the older? Yes. I don't want to see them. They're young or older? Are they old? Like, or like, like... They are there. They are out. <laughs> they are there. <laughs> they are there. Yeah. They are there. <laughs> yes. Did you send them the song and say, hey, here's the song? Can Listen you jump to on it? I sent or? two of them the songs and you could just feel the judgments thing. One person was like, the, at the mention of my name, <laughs> eh? Mm -mm. Every picture I run. <laughs> <laughs> but one person actually gave me like a tangible reason why she can't. Which, be which is? Which was what? No, it was like um, she also had something doing at that time. So okay. I, I didn't force so it. So she would have loved but to be on the it. The three, yeah. Okay. The three, I just stopped. I didn't want to go further. How often you, did you get that? So, okay. like, me? Yeah, people like rejections from. How difficult is it looking at your brand and people? You know what I mean? We're I don't really get it. I got it. That time. that time, okay. I am I am someone that um I don't work with people because I know you. No, Just I I time. unless I have the music and I feel like this music actually fits this person, mm. and then I give it to you. And if you are not gonna do it, I put it down. So it's like with that one, it was money. I was like, I can do this song. I was singing and rap on it, and management was like, No, let's get a gospel person That's on right. it. And because the the gospel people. Some of them were acting some way. You have to personally talk to them. Mm. And that is how I, I got, got there in. with the rejection mm. and everything. But I don't get that rejection thing. Uh, if if the mentioned? if the okay. song doesn't fit you, I won't give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, you um, mentioned your all female album. Yeah. Um I mean, before you released the album, there was the whole frenzy, everybody was happy about it and all of that. Yeah. The songs on it are good. But after that, yeah. after its release, we yeah. didn't see that the the push, or we didn't yeah. see it get to get the buzz that we were expecting it to to yeah. get. What 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 would you say happened to to that? I think before the release of this album, I was like, well, some of the songs were were known, even though I was not personally like making the moves because. If you, you recall, I was very sick after um, 2021. I was not okay. So um, we were doing what we could do, mm. but not like you were not seeing me you know, out there because four of the songs out of this album got nominated at VGMA. Mm. The one with Wendy Shea, God is a Woman, Won the Best Dropper. Eh, the one, it's, it's... Yeah. Yeah. It's like I got four nominations out of this album. So it was, I would say it did good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I wanted to just do a little bit back on the whole um, collaborating with the gospel artists. I think Sir Sendonko mm -hmm. had an issue when, yeah, when she, she did collaborated with Ifia Akwabwa, and I think Gideon of um, uh, what was the name of uh, that um, thing? There's a reality show, a little guy that she discovered. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there was she a whole backlash. lot of backlash. That she, she shouldn't have. Yeah. Yes. It be, that like, why did you put Ifia on a song and all that? You know, a whole lot of backlash going on. Even. Tasha Cops faced the same yeah. thing with Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj for, yeah. for one of the records. Mm -hmm. How do you feel as as an artist, as a female artist, you know, having to try and get your either your big sisters on board to because the church, quote unquote, mm -hmm. did not had had not accepted you, have not received you, but for your father, <coughs> and yeah. then you look up to these women of God who are yeah. supposed to be the ones that you can easily have a conversation because sometimes I feel like 
the difficulty is having to have the conversation with the males yeah. right mm. because they don't really understand what you're dealing with right but when you are talking woman to woman it should be easy but I, I think me talking man to woman is easy for me though <laughs> why <laughs> I, I like myself in the space of guys than in the space of females. Is, is it because reason? is it because of the, the I have always experiences been like that. No. you, you had? I have you always young. been a guy's girl. Like, is it rap? I don't know. I don't. Rap? It's not the rap thing. Like, I fun- I function well when I'm in the midst of less males. judgment. I just don't know. I'm okay when I'm in the midst of males. I don't, I don't feel okay when I'm, I'm, I'm with females. You don't feel okay when you're with females. Mm-hmm. So has there been a point where people have? suspected that you were you know um, oh a whole lot of times and how have you taken that but if i'm not it doesn't have to bother <laughs> <me>. yeah <laughs> no but i i wanted you to talk to me about i didn't get your question or this <laughs> no, I, me too, yeah. I don't understand but i love it <laughs> you know, so, it's like when you follow people where yeah. you have to show people what you are not even supposed to show and mm. they're like if you are not you have then prove yourself so you of, understand yeah. but why have it, the, the fact that you know the post being only me saying you know, okay <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, come on. So yeah, I I wanted you to just talk to me a little bit on the whole um, woman to woman conversation, woman to woman relationship. Um, Do do you have mentors in the game, or do you have mothers or sisters in the game that you can call, pick up the phone and call, yes, and talk to them and say, hey, I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing with that, and how, if you want to celebrate them, why not? Yes, God bless confidence, confidence Mm. of um, Afro, Afro, yes, okay. Yes, when uh, the whole Ghana was like, this girl don't know how to dress. Mm. She don't know how to do this, and then all of a sudden everything turned out yeah. mm. different. Mm. How did you think I I just woke up and everything turned? Mm. No, she's been somebody who has always got my back from the beginning of my career. She mm. told me, I, mm. I see you like Miss Ellis. I see you like yeah. different. True. And it's like. Um, I was the one who was not even opening up at that time. Mm. You understand? And she has been, yeah, I call her my glam mother. Not glam, <laughs> like glam mother. Yeah. You understand? She she was part of the directing of the whole God is a woman video. Mm. You understand? Wow. Like, Stacey Amwatin has been my mom. Mm. When my days of running away, sometimes I, I go and stay in her house. Wow. wow. For months. Wow. Yes. wow. And I stay with Stacy and Achami Kofi for a while. So it's like I have mothers in the game that I talk to mm. when it's bad. There are times where I give up and I can cry the whole night and mm. Stacy will be with me oh. on the phone till morning. Wow. And in the morning when she sees me and I'm smiling, she insults me. Yeah. And and I mean coming close to Abewanana. Oh, you, you Abiru- yes, wow. Abiru- is someone that I adored so much. Mm. And Abiru- now will tell me the reality of the game any time, any day. Mm. She has mm. my back. You know, I like Miss Bell so much. She, mm. Anytime she sees you, she'll give you that. that vim. It's like anybody that I've seen um, do, do anything in the industry and it's like a woman like mm-hmm. up there, I yeah. always like want to give you that maximum respect and it's like they always want to give back to me by mm. advising and shielding me, you mm. know, trying mm. to make me know that mm. I'm different, I'm special and I have to keep on going. Mm. Sometimes it's not just myself, my mind or my brains that are telling me that don't give up, but you have all these people also yeah, talking. So you have a support, yeah. system. Yeah. A support yes. system. For confidence, you know, God bless you. If I do anything bad right now, She's and that one phone. calls out shake is like wow. my mom, like they really I, chastise me. Wow. Yeah. I'm told we have eight minutes more. Uh, yeah. I know that some that people have still have questions. Yes, let, uh, uh, let me ask uh, okay. maybe just two and uh, just hand over. Oh, let me do one. Just two. Now, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I looked at this video. When I watched, I think I watched it with some, some production people and I looked mm-hmm. at it. I think it was Ricky and Anita and I said, hmm, and what that call film movie? It was I think it was, it was me and Anita, and I said, hey, no, I could, I could me. Yeah. Remember that tweet that got us talking? Yeah. <laughs> so, what's up for CSC? I'm going to say, I didn't have any panic. Of you know? course. You're not afraid. For those of you who <laughs> back in the day, medical tweeted that she looked like a ghost. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I was like, why did you even have to go do that? When I, I was watching with Anita, and I was like, no, why did she have to do this? And then you talked about how. People said you had brought a coffin on it. What is it? Yeah. Don't you fear things like that? And why did you want to do that to bring that conversation? So the song is Don't Judge Me. When is judgment going to happen? We feel like judgment happens when you are fast. And so me talking to God is like reality is like when you are dead and you are talking to God. Dear God, 
comparing my good deeds to my bad, like my bad way do hey, I'm mm. not sure I'll make it to heaven. But I don't want to go to hell, then I wake up. So oh. that's what it's trying to like the video is trying to say that check yourself. So right now, if you die right now, are you making it to heven or hell? And there's yeah, a salvation and our preaching. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that's what she said that she's preaching in a different way. Yeah. And then my final question is why why is it become so difficult to see Enu? I don't know why to say it's difficult, but to see Enu flourish beyond Ghana. Yeah, you know? myself, I always ask that question because me, I've done whatever it takes and my management is also trying to push. I always like um, feel like it ain't here, I enjoy it, so I'm still working. It's not just me, like most of the females in Ghana is like, we do so good in Ghana, but we don't really do good yeah, outside Ghana. Gonna, but yeah. but yeah. With, with what Ms. G has asked, right, yeah. have you tried reaching out to some... Um, female artists internationally, not even just female, maybe yeah. artists generally internationally a whole outside lot. Ghana. A whole, to lot. With a whole lot. And I believe in God's time. A whole lot. Because I will want to see myself out there. But what happens yeah. with it then? If you reach out to a whole lot of them? It's always know. like it's in the process, but okay. it's in the you can't tell whether the person is doing it or not. Mm. You know. But I'm working on an all female African female rappers project though. Okay. Who are Which, these people? Um um, recently, the best female rapper from Liberia came to my house. I was there for a while. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a collaboration with two people from South Africa. And watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to Niger? <laughs> I I she did answer that. She doesn't answer that. She doesn't watch out. She doesn't watch out. She doesn't watch out. She doesn't watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Let's let's talk yeah. about Ghanaian women and rap um, yeah. in this country. Um, you are literally holding the the torch, mm -hmm. right? Um, with the the grounds you've gained and mm -hmm. the impact you've made and where you're headed to, have you expanded? You know your impact in raising, you know. Um, young and upcoming female rappers who would you know be on your side mm -hmm. and help you push the agenda because like yeah. i said it's, yeah. it's male driven and you don't have quite a number of the ladies out there out there even the the, the singers are, yeah. are struggling how much yeah. more you know yeah. rap so what what have you discovered what gap have you identified and what are you yeah. looking to do to bridge it i think um i have a barony gang That's barony one. gang is not just people who are just supporting me but females who are talented i not just female rappers though. Right. Females who are like have ambitions are what I always put together to make my gang. Mm -hmm. So you see most of the girls I work with, dance with and everything. It's a gang that we actually push pushing females with ambitions. Right. But then aside that, I have seen a lot of female rappers who are upcoming and I can't I'm not in the position to sign you. But then mm. I do my best. My last album had five upcoming, upcoming female rappers wow. in there. And aside that, there are lots of things that we do, close doors. Mm. But I'm not here to sign anybody. I'm doing my best if it gets to when the person wants to appreciate me. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. And I know you're also, um, that's my last question. I know you're also into real estate um mm -hmm. business um how's that going so far and real estate is like hey, that real estate real estate like that hey you know something like you know magic mind, mind, yeah. like real estate no, no, but, yeah. Yeah. Hey, people only saw the land though. <laughs> <laughs> magic magic minds is not just a record a recording label okay. it's like um we have another side of us that is, is into building construction okay uh, land sales and stuff so it's like if you want to build like your beautiful office here We've got people who can do that, mm. and we have um, <clears throat> lands for sale, especially <laughs> okay. at the mountainous areas. Right. So you can hook us up if you want to buy some lands. So are you yeah. a founder of Magic Minds, or you? I'm a, not the a partner, I'm, I'm a small, shareholder. Oh, say I'm a CEO, now a CEO. Like mm. which one is the, the big one? The CEO is the big one. The CEO is the big one. The CEO is the big one. And the CEO is the CEO. That's the big one, not CEO. But you can be a CEO. CEO. I am. I am. CEO is bigger than CEO. I'm the face of Magic Minds, uh -huh. let me say. Like ah, because you can okay. be a CEO and not own the business. Yes. Yes. You Come can on. be hired. I'm a shareholder, CEO. though. Like, <laughs> yes. That's nice. Anyways, like, awesome. Do you have any more? <laughs> nah. uh, do you have any more thing, uh, questions? No, to I ask just it? wish her the best. And mm -hmm. I'm very happy that she's bold in the face of Ghanaian uh, backlash. Stay bold. Stay hard. Shall you know the best? I Thank think you. someone wants to ask on Facebook, mm -hmm. Enoch Success. He says, can you please ask Eno to name her top five rappers, excluding herself? Like Please top don't five judge rappers. me. Top five, five rappers. Yes, excluding yourself. Yeah, Kanye West. One. Missy Elliott. Two. Excluding myself. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that was hard, isn't it? It's uh, hard to not uh, Kendrick. Yourself. Three. Zach. Four. 
Young man. Wow. No, at certain point, I thought you were not going to come home. I thought you were going to come home. I think you cannot so come home, you, you know. Five, so, five, no, that was for Amrado. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you, you did five. That's six. Oh, you, so, so now that's six. six. Oh, six. Because yeah. you yeah. mentioned Kendrick, okay. Sack, um, um, Miss Yellow, Miss Yellow Kanye. Kanye, okay. and then um, Amrado, and then yeah. now. Strong man. Yeah. Fantastic. Lovely. Well, it's been a pleasure having you. I think that we've all enjoyed the session where you talked about the song. Yeah. Is the conversation has really been about the song mm. and everything you know therein. And uh, you know, we have another LPM, and again, I'll get let's see you with it because oh. I don't have that voice, you know. No, 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 you are no, no, the one who's having the this voice. This one is between really. I'll do it, do it, do it. Ah, so hey, so your voice, voice. Let's, let's go, let's go. Let's let's go. go. Let's let's go. go. Let's 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 let Get ready for the city's hottest streetwear pop-up and concert dubbed Merch Mania 2K22. The culture happening on the 2nd of December 2022 at the Three Music Headquarters from 12 noon till 11 p.m. Come and be entertained by your favorites, Spacely, Lamim Gan, Lazmid, LaRusso, Baba J, Young Dems, and many more. Get your tickets by dialing star 713 star 33 star 217 hash or call on 050-193-6691 for more information. Partners 3 Music, 3 Media Networks, Comeback Service and Creature and creatures brought to you by Samfido Lifestyle, Labadi Music and Bandwagon. So Merch Mania on the 2nd of December, 12 noon to 11 p.m. this Friday, 3 Music HQ. It's a holiday. You need to come by. You know, we'll be here to party with you all through. Thank you so much, Eno Baroni, for coming through. Thank the you. King of Queens, the rap goddess. We wish you all the best. And you guys, go stream the song. You know, don't judge me, Eno and De Wills, and definitely listen to the lyrics and go preach it in your church. Uh, thanks to Cyril, <laughs> Lenny, and Olele for joining us as team members. We yeah. are in-house people. And my name is Miss We are back again tomorrow for the Throwback Edition. Yeah.